Shalom, shalom, family. This is Yehuda from Yah's Assembly, and today we're getting back into a proverb a day to keep Satan away. And today we're going over Proverbs 29. This is um, continuing about warnings and instructions, and as always, it shows the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. So please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and share our content. Also, we are on Odyssey, Yah's Elect Assembly on Odyssey, but let's get into it. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy so whenever we're getting corrected we got still got to stay humble especially if it's that tough love unless you want to be destroyed nothing a waste when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked beareth rule the people mourn that's why people are mourning all across the world because the wicked are ruling us and they have some very sadistic and satanic plans for us. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. And we know that wisdom is the commandments of the Most High or the law. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Right? The king by judgment established the land. But he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. So don't fall for bribes. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. But the righteous doth sing and rejoice. Right, because we understand the key of David. We understand the law of manifestation. And we are in good standing with our creator. The righteous considereth the, poor, the cause of the poor. But the wicked regardeth not to know. Yeah, they don't care. They're not trying to help the poor. They don't want to take care of the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. That's our job. That's our job as the righteous ones. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. That's what we're supposed to do. Get our people to see their sins, their transgressions, get them to humble themselves and pray and repent of their sins so that we can all be delivered. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Right. Because foolish people, that's what they love to do. They love arguments. They love debates. They love drama. They love chaos. So it's better just to not even deal with them. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Even though we're hated, we still be worried about people's souls in the end. Trying to get people to repent. Trying to get people to understand that, man, biblical prophecy is being fulfilled every day almost at this point. This is not the time to be falling away. But those that hate us, the bloodthirsty, they just want to see us dead. And we just want to see them live forever the right way through the Most High. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Like I've been saying, there is power in silence. You don't have to let somebody know everything that's on your mind, especially when it's the first thing that comes to mind when you get in your feelings, when you get in your flesh and your emotions. Sometimes it's better to just bite the bullet. And if you're getting corrected, take the correction. Or if they're just out of line and you just need to separate yourself from them, then that's what you need to do. Stop making excuses and get it done. Get it done. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked, right? Because they're following their leadership. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. Yahuwah lighteneth both their eyes. So he takes care of the poor and the deceitful man. Gives them both wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. That's why there's an everlasting covenant with David that he said he would not alter nor break. And we know it's going to be established here on earth in the land of the living. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Stop pawning your, your kids off from other people. Uh, stop making excuses. Spend time with, with your kids and raise them the right way. Stop leaving a child to themselves. When they start raising themselves, that's why they end up being adult hellions. Children of hell. Literally. 
Take the time, sacrifice the time. It shouldn't be a sacrifice. You created them. It's your responsibility. Man up or woman up or whatever. And do what you got to do because this race of life, you will be judged for how you raise your children. I cannot uh, emphasize that enough. Especially if you are the man or the head of your household, you're going to be judged behind that. So it would behoove you to get on the right path and get on your children. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. So going back um, up to 15, I'm going to read that one again. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. We don't want to be shameful to our parents. We don't. Because when, once we're given a name, that's an honor, that's a title, that's an authority. We're not supposed to be disgracing that thing. Uh, then again, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Because it's going to only be with thine eyes. So thou behold to see what the reward of the wicked. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Some parents be so scared of what their kids because they don't think that they're going to be their friend or love them. Your children are actually going to love you more, especially when you're teaching them and letting them know why they're being corrected or disciplined. If you love your child, don't spare that ride. Don't spare that ride. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So this is one of my favorite uh, verses. It's a kind of a bedrock for me. But people only pay attention to the first part of this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So having a vision is key. But keeping the law is what makes that thing multiply, bountiful, uh, abundant. But people don't want to deal with that because they think it's done away with. It's not a burden. It's not a curse. It's our life. It's our livelihood. It's literally the Ten Commandments was the original covenant. And you want to tell me if that's a law? I mean, if that's a curse or a burden? Miss me with your nonsense. You can just miss me with that. So again, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Why is he happy? Because nothing can offend you. You can be corrected. You can humble yourself. You can pray. You can confess your sins. You can love your neighbor as yourself. Nothing can offend you if you keep the law. A servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. No, because the servant ain't about to get out of line. Say the wrong thing. <laughs> and make matters worse. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. You see how important it is uh, to be mindful of the things that you say? You see the power in silence? We have to have that spirit of discernment in this day. That's what we've been talking about. Discernment, discernment, discernment. You cannot just go off the handle and say whatever you want to say. Not if you call yourself a child or a man, a man child or a man woman of God. You can't, you can't do that. Now, do we all slip up and fall? Yes, but that should not be our habit. That should not be a habitual thing with us. You, you know why? Because we're supposed to be ruling over our spirit. And a lot of us are just immature. Let's just call it spade a spade. Don't want to change. Want to have the old man or old woman control and rule everything. It's time for us to put all things in subjection. All things under our feet. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. You see how rewarding it is to delicately correct, um, discipline, even a servant or a child. And if it's a servant, then they become yourself. So they become what? Uh, of one mind, of one flesh. My father and I are one. Are one. An angry man stirreth up strife and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You see why it's important to control your mouth and to control your mind and to control your spirit or ruach. It's an honorable thing to be in complete control 
of your spirit, of your actions, of your reactions, of your energies and motion, your energy. It's, it's an honor to you when you can control it. But some of us don't want to take our minds off of autopilot. Just don't. It's too much work. I can't do that all day. You can think all day. Hmm. Whoso is partnered with the thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not. So, because we know that we're not supposed to steal. That's one of the, the original ten. So yeah, if you do that, because you know you reap what you sow, but you're cursing your own soul. You don't, you don't, you don't love your life. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in Yahuwah shall be safe. It don't matter what snares come upon you. It don't matter the deceptions that they're coming out with. It don't matter the weapons that are formed against us. They shall not prosper because our faith, our trust, and our confidence is in our creator. Through his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from Yahuwah, right? An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. That's why there's two laws warning your members, the law of God and the law of the flesh or the law of sin and death. There's always two. So there's always two. Even if you get, think about Greek mythology, I, I think it's Greek, you know, Prometheus bringing that fire down to man. Uh the snake beguiled Eve, which led to the fall. What do you think that fire was? It wasn't a literal fire. It was uh, a whole nother Torah, a whole nother law. There's always two. That's why we weren't to eat of that, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We weren't. We weren't. And once we had the knowledge of this other tree or this other law, man fell. There's always two. There's always two laws warning your members. It's a battle. It's literally a battlefield in there. But you have to take control over your kingdom, over your dominion. You have to take accountability for it. You got to work on yourself. You got to go through the water. You got to see your reflection. And you, got, you have to be changed. You have to see how ugly you are, for a lack of a better term. How imperfect you are. But realize that you serve a perfect God or a perfect Allah, perfect creator that can perfect you. Because your imperfections are supposed to kill you. That's why we're supposed to be mortifying our members daily. Daily. It's not just you have an epiphany, you get it right one day and you don't have to do it no more. Like, no. Because I don't know about y'all, but the way this life set up, man, I got to work on that every day. Every day. So, Father, we thank you for your word, which endure forever. We ask for you to forgive us of our sins, the sins of our ancestors. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life, Father. Thank you for a chance at eternal life, Father. Thank you, Father, for your love, which covers a multitude of sins. Thank you for your son, who was faithful unto death. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our places of employment. Thank you for our vehicles. Thank you for the air we breathe, um, our skin, every organ, ligament, tendon, bone, um, Adam, Father, everything that makes us up, thank you, Father, for loving us enough to create a reality and then to create, uh, to have a body prepared for us, Father. Thank you, Father, for all of the body of Christ, all of the body of Mashiach, Father. Thank you, Father, for remembering your covenant that you have with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob and with David, which is an everlasting covenant that you said that you would not alter nor break, Father. Thank you for remembering your people, Father. Thank you, Father for waking us up father in in a time in a day in an age like this father thank you father for creating in us generations of righteousness father thank you for your hand being stretched out still thank you for your arm being stretched out still thank you for your long suffering thank you for your tender mercies father thank you father because our existence is all because of you you didn't have to create this reality you didn't have to create us father just thank you for having a plan for our lives and for helping us to be the beacons of light that you have created us to be father thank you father for even the trials and tribulations that you are bringing us through father so that we can be transformed so we can take on another form father so we can have another spirit father so we can be uh the true culmination of the or manifestations of the adoptions of sons and daughters of you 
because we believe that the kingdom of heaven is within us. Father, we believe that you dwell within us, Father. We believe that greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world, Father, because we trust you. We give you all praise. We give you all honor. We give you all glory today, Father. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, Amen. So again, this was a proverb a day to keep Satan away. This was Proverbs 29. I am Yehuda. This is Yah's assembly. So please subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and share our content. And as always, until next time. Peace, family. Whoa.